Welcome in everyone and welcome to the Cup of Tea channel. So from January 26th, we've received our first patch notes since the release of Season 3. With these patch notes 1.3.0a, we're going to be receiving some improvements and changes to the Echo of Malthus, which was the boss from the end of Season 3's campaign and its uber variant. And in addition, the Seneschal, which is the robotic spiderling, the seasonal mechanic that has received some improvements with its tuning as well as governing stones. And then finally, the vaults and arcane tremors have also received some quality of life improvements. So in this video, we're going to be going over these notes right here. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting things off with the patch notes is the changes to the echo of Malthus. I will put a description of these patch notes in the link below so if you want to read it for yourself you can do so but starting things off with the developers note saying we have noticed that players tended to use the pearls of warding for fighting echo of Malthus instead of Zolta's warding. We are adding the igneous cores a new item solely to summon Malthus instead of pearls so players don't have to choose between the extra protection in the vaults or fighting the boss. Additionally, we have made the fight against Malthus more difficult but also increased the rewards it provides. So following on from the developer's note, they have increased Echo of Malthus' level from level 85 up to 100 now so he's going to be hitting a lot harder and having a higher health pool. In addition, they are going to be increasing that health pool by 30% as well so you can actually try out the whole fight mechanic in itself and have somewhat of a challenge. I've seen footage from other players where they've literally just gone in and he's dead before like the fight has even started so this is actually going to be giving us an opportunity to actually do the mechanics that a lot of people wanted to actually try out. And as mentioned earlier there is going to be a new resource material to be able to summon or have access to the vault to be able to take on Echo of Malthus. A new item Igneous Cores now exists for the purpose of accessing the Uber Vault and Echo of Malthus. This item will replace the usage of Pearls of Warding in providing access. The Igneous Cores have a chance to drop from Vault Heralds and are guaranteed to drop from the Sun of Malthus in World Tier 4. And then finally for the Echo of Malthus they have updated the loot drops as well as the quality so the drop rates for unique stones from Malthus have been increased from 0.25 to now 0.5% and in addition to that the unique stones now have a 3% chance of dropping from the chest after the boss and then finally you're going to be receiving a lot more legendary items upon defeating him and in addition item level 925 items will drop more frequently so this will now be a more viable option to be able to farm that end game loot or gear. So now we're going to move on to the second part of the patch notes and this is all to do with the Seneschal. So the Seneschal is the robotic companion that assists you as you progress through season 3 and we're going to start off with the developers note saying that they have received feedback from the Seneschal and know that it does not feel powerful. The Seneschal becomes more powerful as it reaches max level but we have noticed that many players have not had the chance to level up the Seneschal enough to experience this. We are introducing multiple changes to ensure players have more sources to earn governing and tuning stones from so they can level up their Seneschal and they can unlock their new companions full potential. So following on from those notes right there, the crafting of governing and tuning stones will now always cost you 200 shatter stone as well as 20 iron chunks regardless of the level. So it's that set amount. So if you're looking for that specific stone or if you're wanting to level up your current ones, it's just going to be that set amount and a lot easier to progress those levels, but also find the ones that you need for your build. And if you find a tuning or governing stone that you've already maxed out, it's going to provide you with 150 to 200 shattered stone. So then you can actually level up those other stones you have not managed to grind out to the max yet. And then this next point is technically a buff to whispers as well, because if you complete a whisper, the rewards that you receive can be governing and tuning stones also. And on the subject of attaining the stones, the Son of Malthus now also always drops two to three governing and tuning stones and stones awarded from the Seneschal stone caches have been increased from one to two stones. And then as you're leveling the experience requirements for governing and tuning stones has been reduced so these can be ranked up a lot more naturally as well. And what it should do in turn is as you're progressing through the season as you're going through your nightmare dungeons your vaults as you're just leveling your character naturally the Seneschal should be leveling up naturally and efficiently by itself also so as you're just doing the content that Seneschal will be leveling up and getting stronger alongside with you rather than it being you've now completed that section of the game you now got to go over and start progressing this it should all complement one another and then moving on to the last section of the patch notes we do have bug fixes also applied within these patch notes but with that I'm just going to leave that within the link and if you want to check through what those were you can have a read through of those but what we're going to cover through on this section now is the vaults and arcane tremors in terms of quality of life changes and updates they've applied so they've started things off saying we have made multiple quality of life changes to the player experience in vaults and arcane tremors starting off with first consuming a pearl of warding at the statue of zoltan cool now grants you 10 stacks of zoltan's warding instead of three so as you're trying to avoid those traps 
you can now basically rush through it and not be punished as harshly. So beforehand, you had to be very careful not losing one or two stacks and having to use quite a lot of pearls of warding to compensate for that. Now with just one pearl of warding used, you're going to get 10 stacks, which is roughly what I used on average just to safely get through it. So now you can use three and essentially get 30 stacks, which is so much better. And then the max stacks of Zoltan's warding has been increased from 300 to 999. So you can go a bit crazy if you really want to. If you're going to get hit by every single thing you walk by, this is going to allow you to be able to do that. They're also going to be making traps a lot less punishing as well in terms of your Zoltan's warding. So you now have a grace period increase from 1 second to 1.5 second now. And what that does, for example, if you were hit by three projectiles at once, rather than losing three stacks, instead you're just going to be losing at that single stack. So for example, if you're a barbarian and you have to rely on certain abilities such as lunging strike where it forces you to an enemy's position and it so happens to be that on a trap, it's not going to be like minus three because you got hit by this, this, that. Instead, you're just going to lose that single stack, meaning you're actually more happy to use those abilities and sacrifice a little bit to be able to kill those demons. And with Heralds of Malthus, they're now guaranteeing you a legendary item drop starting from level 26 with a 15% chance to drop a second legendary item, very similar to how they buff the treasure goblins when they drop stuff. And in addition, knockbacks have been removed from the obelisk hazards and chests will now appear after completing a vault's ending encounter. These new chests will drop a guaranteed legendary item starting from level 26 plus with a 35% chance to drop another legendary item so they're going to be rewarding you a lot more legendaries by completing these events rather than just doing your nightmare dungeons for loot the vaults are going to be as just as rewarding now and then the last three are to do with changes to the hazards as well as traps so the projectile speed of elemental dart hazards has now been reduced by 20 percent meaning it's a lot more easier to dodge these or to be caught off guard by them and then the hitbox for floor based elemental grates and spike hazards have been reduced roughly by 15%. And then lastly, the spout hitbox for the elemental pillars have been reduced by roughly 15% also. And that wraps everything up for patch notes 1.3.0a. These are now live on the Diablo 4 server, so be sure to check them out. But in addition, we're going to be receiving some additional patch notes, patch notes 1.3.1, and these will be out on January 30th. And my question is to you guys, as you've seen with a lot of players' feedback, not being too happy with the current state of Season 3, do you think these changes are going to be enough to improve the game? And what do you want to see them actually do for this season to actually get them out of this little bit of a dip in terms of content they're providing? Myself, I've been enjoying little elements of it, but from personal experience as well, I feel it is quite a little bit lackluster and I'm a little bit gutted about it. Um, I don't want to say I hope they make improvements to that. I want them to because I do enjoy this game and playing it and also making content for it. But when you're in a position like this, it does make it rather difficult to keep that motivation. But I'm still going to keep going through the Diablo 4 content. Do not worry about that. I'm still going to be playing the game. If you do want to catch me over on my live stream, you can find me over at twitch.tv forward slash cuppa underscore underscore t and even ask me some questions or your opinion on it as well. As long as it's constructive and you're not just going to drop by and say, you know, not, not having a good time. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all trying to work out what's going to work for this new season as well and what they can do to improve it. A lot of us are fans of the franchise and we want it to do good. But when we've had two seasons where it's been a little bit of a disappointment, season two has been rather good. If you did not know, this is something that I recently found out. They have two teams that work on each season. So every odd season, they have a team for that. And then every season for the evens, they'll have a team for that. And obviously, you can kind of tell what one's strong, what one works, what one doesn't work as much, and what they need to do in terms of developing to improve on this. Um, making these videos and that, I hope that maybe someone from the team can actually like communicate with me. I would like to ask some questions and also just, you know, communicate with the community who want this game to succeed very well. But obviously you are aware of other ARPGs that are on the rise that have been doing absolutely phenomenal, been receiving some great feedback. What could Blizzard do to take in terms of inspirational ideas that could work, but also not work and learn from that. And most importantly, hopefully here, something very soon from them because again a lot of content creators are a little bit on the edge such as myself I, i've been worried here and there but hopefully there'll be something coming into the future where they actually make a large improvement we'll find out january 30th of what's going to be added on as well and that may be a deciding factor for a lot of players in this game as well but until then hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to drop a like comment and subscribe to the channel as well for more diablo 4 content and i'll see you in the next video take care